Hey guys, have you ever thought I gotta up my game a little bit, maybe take some action? I'm even thinking about treatment coordination for my practice. That might free up some of my time. And uh, how do I talk about this thing called sales in dentistry? Because that's kind of really what we do. Well, if you're asking yourself those questions, I've got one of the experts on it and she's written an incredible book that you have to read. I've got Dr. Anne-Marie Gorsica on here and you don't wanna miss this. So stick around, grab a pen and hit the share button. You're gonna love this. guys, welcome back to the Best Practices Show. My name is Kirk Barrett and I am your host where we take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over. And boy, are you in for a treat today because we're going to talk about how we up your game as a dentist, as a team, and as a practice. And uh, you're going to love this. I, I promise you, you're going to love this. So, hey, if you're here for the first time, I want to do just a couple things that I do all the time. We love this community. And so many of you joined the community last year when we had our COVID conference. We had over 38,000 of you join and opt in. And some of you were dentists. Uh, some of you were students. And some of them, some of you were new dentists. And I, you know, if you're finding yourself here for the first time, I always want to make sure you feel welcome. This is a great community of people that are always just committed to learning. So here's what I want you to do. If you're listening on iTunes or Stitcher or Spotify, wherever you're listening to this, do me a favor, go down and hit that subscribe button because I want you to show up every single week with us because you're gonna see, I'm gonna bring a brand new expert every single week to give you some great tips, advice for your practice and help you create a better practice and a better life and I don't want you to miss out. So make sure you do that. Number two, make sure you join us over at our Facebook group, our uh, best practices powered by Act Dental, where over 13,000 of you have joined. And it's awesome because it's just a place where dentists help other dentists. And you're gonna see it's a great community. Of people that are just there to help you. And then lastly, if you are just looking and like, how do I improve my practice a little bit or inspire my team? Join us over at actdental.com where you have Act Dental U, where you'll see every single week we bring a brand new masterclass with an expert in dentistry to get down into the details of teaching. We, we do a, a, a Friday masterclass that's 90 minutes. Today we had Dr. Nate Lawson talking about advanced concepts in zirconia. So uh, not only is the class 90 minutes, but you also get 30 minutes of Q&A with all of these industry experts, and it's awesome. You can also find coaching resources over uh, on the rest of the site. So if you're just looking for a place to improve your practice or if you just need somebody to speak to about how the heck do I do this? Give us a call. We're always here to help, help you improve it. So, hey, I wanna introduce my guest. And Amory, I've known you for a long time. I have every one of your books and they are absolutely fantastic. Now, you uh, sent me the new one and I'm gonna say this, like I'm not just saying this because I like you and I'm not, say I'm very picky about books, very picky about books. A lot of books have filler, a lot of books, you're thinking who the, just get to the point, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Author. This is not one of those books. This is one of those books that I'm going to say it's required reading. It is so good. Now, in full disclosure, I haven't finished it because I've been taking notes all over the place <laughs> and I'm not the fastest reader, but this is awesome and it's, it's phenomenal and we're going to get into it, but I want people to know who you are. You are, and you're one of the top publishers in all of dentistry. I saw that last week. So if somebody doesn't know who you are, tell us who Dr. Anne-Marie Gorsica is. Well, thank you, Kirk. It's so great to be here. Um, I am a practicing orthodontist. I've been in orthodontics for 30 years. I celebrated 30 years last year. And uh, I also have, uh, I run my own practice, Gorsica Orthodontics. But I have a background in uh, health management and policy from the Harvard School of Public Health, 
where I got my master's degree in public health. And because of that experience, I've always had a very strong interest in uh, dental practice management. Um, I have taught dental practice management at both UCSF and UOP dental schools. And I write the books that I always wished I had had. And everything in my books are learned uh, through experience, uh, through trial and error. And uh, I put down what I've learned in hopes that it will help other people grow their practice to be the type of practice that will make them uh, phenomenally happy. Yeah, you make my job as a coach easier because a lot of the questions that I even have are in this. Now, a couple of things I noticed, and I, I have it right here. Let me see if I have it. You had someone write the foreword of this book. And the the person who wrote the foreword of this book, that is one of my favorite books of all time. And I've read it 11 times. I'm not kidding. And it's not that the book has changed. I'm just, yeah. again, not that smart. I've changed every time. I'm like, oh, I forgot that piece. I forgot that piece. How the heck did you get connected with Gino Wickman? I, I got to ask you that up front. Okay, well... Um, a friend of mine, orthodontist Jay Bowman in Kalamazoo, Michigan, he had used uh, EOS uh, services and he did a podcast with Howard Ferran and he mentioned that book, Traction. And that was the first time I'd ever heard of Gina Wickman myself in the EOS system. And I agree with you, Kirk. I mean, once I read that book, Traction, I carried around that book with me for about four years. I think it is one of the best uh, systems management books ever written for small business or any business for that matter. And um, if I can share one game changer from that book uh, that I learned and implemented in my own practice, uh, that is to have a weekly strategy meeting. Uh, that uh, weekly meeting of an hour long is extremely powerful to keep the momentum of your practice going. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like what Gino Wickman says about that is that if you don't have a weekly meeting, he says meetings are the moment of accountability. If you don't have accountability, reporting your numbers, it is like you're a pilot flying a plane over the Atlantic and you say, we don't know how much fuel we have. We don't know how high we are. We don't know how fast we're going. Uh, but the good news is we're making great time, right? <laughs> you're flying blind. Right. So uh, I think that is the best message of uh, Gino Wickman in the traction system is just to know your numbers because numbers are the language of business. Yeah. And once you know your numbers, uh, running a business almost becomes like a game, yep. like a basketball game. What's our score? How many shots are we going to take? You know. <laughs> Right. Did we win? Did we lose? Uh, right. What are we going to do? How many more practices are we going to have? I agree. Like even coaching yeah. seventh grade kids in baseball, like if you didn't yeah. have a score, they can figure it out. They know we're one run down. There's two outs. Like they right. know how to work the strategy. It makes it yeah. a better game. And so I couldn't agree with you more, and, actually. And when you know your numbers, it's I always tell my team this. It's not over till the last minute of the last day, the last hour of the last day. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how many months we've had where the last day is actually like our highest production day because uh, we are trying very hard to make our goals. Yeah. And when you have clear goals and you're working together as a team, uh, it's much easier to achieve those goals. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And today we're going to be talking about um, taking action and treatment coordination. Now, tell us about this concept. Why is it so important? Not only your practice. Now, this isn't just for specialists. This is for everybody. This is for GPs. This is for everybody. Tell us about yeah. this concept and why it's so important. Well, in dentistry or even in medicine, 
it's very common to use the word treatment coordination because we actually never are taught to use the word sales. Uh, somehow sales has become a, a forbidden term. So we use the term treatment coordination. But once you wrap yourself around that topic and understand that it is sales that you are actually dealing with, then you can uh, really study every aspect of sales from right. uh, the initial engagement process, the initial phone call, the conversion of the phone call into the exam, the effectiveness of the exam, the onboarding process, uh, all the way through uh, the conversion, what's your percentage of conversions, um, the, the quality of care, what do you do during care to get more exams, more new patients, um, and then at the end of it all, uh, how many new referrals do, do your existing patients send you? Right. And it's like one whole big circle uh, from start to finish. Um, we always try to get every patient to refer one or two more new patients. And uh, I'm an orthodontist, so the last day that I take the braces off and the patient is thrilled and we take pictures and they say, oh, thank you, I'm so happy. We, um, we give them a share a smile card and uh, we say, I hope that you'll refer one or two more of your family members, uh, friends or coworkers uh, because we'd like more great patients just like you. Yeah. That is awesome. Now, one of the things that everybody has to figure out is you can't do everything. And in this book, I mean, you talk about the qualities of a treatment coordinator. You mentioned before we went live, it doesn't always have to be a person. It's a, it's kind of a mindset and there there's, it's a never give up philosophy. You say in the book, treatment coordination is not like a, Oh, let's do It's a five days a week, full-time job. Can you explain that? Okay, treatment coordination continues always, whether you have a treatment coordinator or you don't, whether the treatment coordinator is in or she's not, you are a treatment coordination team. And it doesn't really matter who is in the room with the doctor at the time of the initial exam. What matters is that you're caring for the patient, you're making it easy for them to start treatment, and that you're following up with them. Mm -hmm. So one, one concept I'd like dentists and orthodontists to get away from is that treatment coordination is a job that can only be done by one person sitting in the room all by herself all day. Uh, that is really a misconception. Um, it doesn't uh, really matter um, who is in the room with you when you do the initial exam. What matters is that someone capable is in the room and that you uh, thoroughly review the treatment, diagnosis, treatment plan, uh, go over the financials, but then you say the magic words. And this is the most important thing. Let's get started. That's what it's all about. You've got to say the magic words. Yeah. So your treatment coordinators yes. say those magic words at I some say, point. I say the magic words. You say that. I, I, would, I would highly recommend that every dentist, whether you're doing implants or braces or uh, crowns, fillings, I don't care what the treatment is. When the dentist reviews the treatment plan with the patient or tells the patient, you need an implant, let's get started. I would have the dentist, before they leave the room, say, Mrs. Jones, this is extremely important. This condition is not going to go away. It's only going to get worse. Let's get started. Wow. And then I will turn to the person in the room the treatment coordinator or whoever is helping you and say, Sally, let's schedule Mrs. Jones for tomorrow at 9 a.m. Whatever your next opening is, it would be helpful 
if the dentist or the treatment coordinator, whoever is, you know, taking charge, what is your next available appointment? And let's fill that appointment. Mm -hmm. So I love what you're saying. Now, let's get out of dentistry for a second. Yes. If all of us went into sales and yes. we really learned a, from a great company that taught sales, they teach you. You got to learn how to ask for the order or else you'll never be good at this. And it's amazing in dentistry because <laughs> I can imagine some people are going to listen to this and they're like, ah, you know, I present it. And then we kind of like wait and we're waiting for them to say the magic words. Let's get started. And, no. and then you stalk them for weeks and weeks and weeks and they blow off your phone calls and all that kind of stuff. So you're going to put us right out there at the beginning. You got to get comfortable at asking for asking for it right up front. I right? would like your listeners to think of it this way. Imagine your patient is asking you, please help me. Please lead mm. me. Please help me get started. Show me what to do to get started. Wow. Because they are coming to you for help. And that is, that is your obligation to help them get started with what they need to do. See why this woman is amazing? Like that is a, it's a big change in your mindset and dentists don't, they, you know, a lot of times they don't go into it understanding that this is an important piece of it. And you've heard all the cliches, you know, nothing happens in the world until a sale is made. It's true. You know, nothing happens until something like that gets started. Now let's go into some well, of the we're, we're all in sales. Uh, Zig Ziglar, right. that famous quote, we're all in sales. If you deal with people in your business, you are in sales, right? And another real uh, wonderful quote that <clears throat> I think the CEO of Coca-Cola company said this once. Uh, he said, um, if you are not um, using our product, selling our product or making our product, you better find a reason to be here. <laughs> Wow. Right? So if you're working in a dental office and you're not promoting your dentistry, using your dentistry, selling your dentistry, why are you there? Right? Mm -hmm. That's your whole reason to be there is to help people get the dentistry that they need and you're there to provide it for them. Right. Okay. So we're going to help a lot of people today. And I mean, the first step is let's get the book and just get your brain around some of these concepts. But Anne Marie, you don't understand. I'm a dentist. I've got 3,000 patients. It's all PPO. I have really nice people that work for me. We're not really salespeople. Do you, know I mean? Do you hire for salespeople? Now, I'm going to throw this question at you. Yes. When, it come, when it comes to treatment coordination, I get this question all the time. Should it be somebody clinical? Should it be somebody administrative? And I'm guessing you're going to say it's the whole office. But and then I have dentists that say only a hygienist could ever do a treatment coordinating thing. So I'm just going to throw you all the questions I get because yes. you've done this. You've had eight treatment coordinators yes. in your career, right? There are positives and there are negatives. Okay. okay. Um, on a positive note, um, if your treatment coordinator is also a dental assistant, that is very positive because when after you review the treatment and you go over the financial arrangements and contract, then if she has time, she can say, OK, let's get started. Let's do your x-rays right now. Let's do your uh, whatever impressions for study models. And that's a huge benefit if the treatment coordinator can get the patient herself started right then and there with initial records. OK. Right. However, um, you could have someone who's a dental assistant and they're not that assertive. You must have an assertive person to accomplish getting those records done. So it doesn't do you any good to have a, a dental assistant if she's not assertive or ambitious or motivated to do those records, go the extra step, do everything she can for the patient. You might be better off having a non-dental person who has a little bit more um, uh, motivational incentive to start the case and go and get someone else in the office to do the initial records. Right. So the, the ideal treatment coordinator for me uh, would be someone who 
has the personality of a winner that um, they are going to do what it takes to be successful and to get the job done. But also they have to be friendly. They have to be likable. They have to be empathetic. And if they happen to be a dental assistant on top of all that, great. But I would say that those, um, those initial qualities are probably more important than whether or not the person's a dental assistant. Yeah. And you spell all that out in the book, which is great. Like there are very specific qualities you're looking for when you bring in new team members. Now, I also want to ask you about this because I hear about this from dentists all over the place. It's not like the old days where I would have people come in for a comprehensive exam, have them back for a consult, and then they signed up for dentistry. Like sometimes there's two follow-ups, three follow-ups, four follow-ups. On page 93, you say studies have shown that 80% of customers buy on the seventh attempt. So it's, okay. it's important. I have to tell you, I, um, I have studied this topic myself. Um, I have been calling my pending list myself for about four years. And what I have discovered really, really surprised me. Um, I have had a patient start Invisalign who came for their exam nine years ago. Wow. <laughs> it took him nine years to get started. And I've had another patient start orthodontic treatment. Uh, she's actually doing orthopedic surgery. She, it took her five years to get started. And actually when she got her braces on, she said to me, Thank you, Dr. Gorsica, for not giving up on me. And um, I would say in my practice that uh, maybe 50% of the patients get started like that month. But I would say uh, another big majority get started about 14 months later. Wow. See, that's really good to know. And, yeah. you know, what we're painting a picture here is you've got to have a consistent mindset. Mm -hmm. And an outward mindset in this uh, whole thing. And, and never give up. Never, right. never give up. Another thing I've learned, which was really a surprise to me, is that your perception of how many times you call the patient or reach out to the patient is not their perception of how many times you've reached out to them. Let me give you an example. Uh, I called a woman to ask her if she wanted to get her daughter started with orthodontic treatment. And I said, hi, Mrs. Jones, this is Dr. Gorska calling from Gorska Orthodontics. I'm just calling to ask if you've given any more thought to starting Sally Sue's orthodontic treatment. The mother said to me, oh, yes, Dr. Gorsica, I'm ready to get started. Thank you so much for calling. And then she said to me, I know you've called four times. Well, that was very surprising to me because I had actually called that woman 14 times. Wow. And she thinks I had called her four times. So it just goes to show you that maybe a quarter of your calls actually register with the patient. So when I hear the pushback phrase, uh, when I lecture on this topic at orthodontic meetings, and I ask uh, treatment coordinators, oh, how many times do you call before you give up on a patient? And some of them, you know, they say twice, three times. And I say, why do you call so, so little? And the, the pushback response is, I don't want to be pushy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, no, you're not being pushy. You're actually doing your job to never give up and call the patient every single month until you get a yes or a no answer. Wow. That is actually your job. That's not being pushy. That's actually right. great customer service. Right. And, and eventually the patient will start in your office. 
but people are busy. They, right. you know, they, dentistry is not their top priority. And um, you are there to help them get started and make it easy for them. Yeah. Now uh, go a little bit deeper into the why, because sometimes people don't, dentists don't really understand how important this is when you've got a, you know, at least a mindset for treatment coordination. You can only do so much as a clinician and you've got to have somebody constantly and you free up time when you, because there's only so much you can do. Now, somebody might be listening to this and go, no, I do all the treatment discussion. Yeah, today you do, then tomorrow you're busy, then the day after that you're busy again, then you get to follow up if you get to it, three mm -hmm. weeks later type of a thing. So having somebody that's constantly connecting with the patients, helping them move forward, this is what you're talking about. And it's a game changer. And most, any orthodontist will tell you, or any, uh, any oral surgeon will tell you that too, like treatment coordinator, it's one of the most important pieces mm -hmm. of how this all works, right? Well, the treatment coordinator, um She's the first line of follow-up. Um, she will automatically call at two days. If the patient doesn't schedule that day or call the next day, in two days, she will call the patient. That is what I call a hot phone call. And then if she doesn't reach the patient that day, she will call again two weeks later, again. And then it's every month after that until you get a yes or no answer. Love it. Love it. Now, um, and, and you outline a lot of that system in here. You even have your like what you say and how receivables work. Like it is so good. I'm just telling you guys, you got to get this now. Okay. Uh, now, may I share with you um, a little tip on getting a yes or no answer? Please. Okay. This is really important for uh, the dentist and the treatment coordinator to not unsell their own treatment. Ooh. And what do I mean by that? Don't say too much because the patient came in wanting treatment. You don't want them walking out not wanting treatment, okay? So when you're in the treatment coordination process and maybe you're discussing implants or maybe you're discussing braces or maybe you're discussing uh, veneers, if you have a model that you can hand the patient, uh, this is really big in sales. It's called the warm puppy effect that if you hand someone something that they want, they put it in their hand, they look at it, you know, and say, are these the braces that you'd like? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I love those braces. Okay. Or, yes, I would like an implant like that with a crown like that. Or, oh, yes, I would like those veneers like that. As soon as you hear the yes response, that's when you should stop and go towards scheduling the appointment to get started. Wow. Now, well, are you... Don't go into more detail. Don't go into how long it's going to take. Uh, just stop and, stop and make the, make the appointment. Okay, so I'm going to throw questions that I get. As soon as I hear a yes, we're going to schedule, then discuss financial arrangements because I yes, hear. That's okay. right. All right, go because into that. When the patient says to me, um, yes, those are the braces I would like. Okay. They don't know the price yet. I'd say, okay, um, well, we do have an opening um, Tuesday at four o'clock, whatever it might be. Um, now, I don't go over the financial arrangements. I would say um, to my treatment coordinator, Gwen, uh, we'll go over the financial arrangements with you and work out a payment plan that works for you. And I'll see you next Tuesday. We will take great care of you. Thank you so much for coming in today. I'll see you next Tuesday. And then I would leave the room. Now, the financial arrangements are very easy in orthodontics. Uh, there, there are really only four financial arrangements. Either payment in full uh, with a small discount, 25% um, down payment, or the lowest down payment with equal monthly payments, or you can do a uh, care credit. That's it. There are four pay payment plans. Which of these do you prefer? 
and they pick. That's it. It takes thirty seconds. It takes thirty right. seconds, and then that's it. Now we do have one program in my office. It's called Simple Consult, and it's really nifty. It's it's a uh, movable slider where you put in the treatment fee, and the patient can move the down payment up or down to see what the monthly payment is going to be so they can choose the exact payment plan that they want. With this program, you press the button, the contract comes out, you sign it, they sign it, you're done. Wow. Yeah. It's, and it's then a- let's, say, let's say you scheduled a one hour consultate. We, we schedule a one hour consultation. Okay. But let's just say that that took 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Well, now you have 45 minutes. You can do the initial records. You can get started. Mm-hmm. So you're doing that. On the, that's awesome. On the first appointment. If, if, you, if you have time, if they can do it, if they have the down payment, do it. Right. Right. Now, other questions that I get that I'm going to ask you is treatment coordination. Sometimes it freaks dentists or specialists out that a treatment coordinator will go all the way up to the line and almost like cross that diagnosis line. Now, talk about the diagnosis piece of it and how it works and just your philosophy on that in the treatment coordinator process as an office. Well, I'm an orthodontist, so it's it's going to be a little different than, say, a hygienist or an assistant or whatever. But um, as an orthodontist, uh, I come in and um, my treatment coordinator is taking notes and I go through whatever I see, class two, division one, malocclusion, uh, eight millimeter over jet, four millimeter over bite, lower crowding, uh, five millimeters, upper crowding, five millimeters, uh, facial profile, uh, not protrusive, um, high curve of speed, whatever. I say everything I can possibly see. I point it out to the patient. I say, see how your teeth stick out? We're going to need rubber bands to fix this. Um, You are a comprehensive case, 24 months. Uh, You have two options, either braces or Invisalign. And uh, which would you prefer? Uh, Patient might say, I prefer Invisalign. Great. Uh, let me tell you about Invisalign, you know, go over, pick up the Invisalign, hand them the Invisalign, tell them, um, these are clear aligners. You'll be getting a set. You'll change them every 10 days. Um, and, um, would you like to get started? Yes. I'd like to get started. Okay. Gwen, we'll go over the uh, financial arrangements with you and, and, um, thank you very much. We'll take great care of you. Another thing that I highly, highly recommend, which is very effective, is um, the social proof of showing other cases exactly like the patient's case. Let me show you a case exactly like your case that we treated with Invisalign Mm -hmm. and then show the before and after photos. That is extremely powerful. And I actually have, I think, eight notebooks in my office of all different types of cases where I can find one usually just like the patient I have in my chair so that I can show them um, that and they get confidence from that, that they, their treatment can be done to that same level of excellence. Yeah, I love this. What do you think people get wrong the most when it comes to the sales process in a dental practice or treatment coordinator? What's, what's the one thing you see dentists just not get right or get wrong? Okay. Well, I'll tell you, I have one of the best dentists in the world. Uh, I know every dentist in my community, and I know I have an excellent dentist, and I love him to death. He is excellent, and he is kind, and he is gentle, and that's why I go to him. And uh, recently, I went for my dental appointment, and he told me I had a cracked bicuspid, a cracked lower bicuspid. And he said, Anne Marie, you have got to get this fixed. You've got to get this restored because that tooth is going to crack on you. Now, I had no symptoms in the tooth. The tooth looked fine. Um, 
I had no pain. If he had said to me, Anne Marie, we're going to schedule you right now. You have to get this taken care of because I'm telling you, it's just a matter of days that tooth is going to crack on you and then you're going to be in severe pain. Let's go schedule your appointment right now. If he had taken the lead and just said, you must do this. It's very important. As your dentist, I'm telling you, this is necessary. Um, but he's a little bit shy. So he didn't really say that. So I left and I didn't make the appointment. Mm. And sure enough, like a month or two later, the tooth cracked. And I was in his office, emergency, <laughs> and he fixed my tooth. So that's taking the lead. The doctor has to take the lead. Um, mm -hmm. And in the book, I tell the story of my really good friend, Livy Matthews, who um, worked for a treatment, she worked as a treatment coordinator in Charlotte, Charlotte, North Carolina, for a dentist that she said could sell ice to an Eskimo. And uh, I met with Livy when I was writing the customer service book. And I was going over my customer service uh, um, initial patient experience with her. And I was saying, Livy, what do you think? What do you think of, of what I'm writing here in this book? And she said, it's all good, but there's one thing you need to say. And there's one thing you need to do. I said, what's that? She said, at the very end, you need to take the lead. You need to turn to your treatment coordinator and say, Gwen, we need to schedule Tom for tomorrow at three o'clock to get started. Mm -hmm. And then say, thank you very much. Very nice meeting you today and leave the room. Mm -hmm. So I came back to California from North Carolina and I said, okay, I'm gonna try Livy's technique. And if my next 25 patients in a row didn't all get started. Wow. I mean, it was a transformational change. Yeah. So doctors do need to take the lead. And same thing with calling patients. I would highly, highly recommend that if doctors do have the time, that they actually do follow up with their pending list themselves. Right. Because when I call my patient and I say, um, Tom, I wanted to know if you're ready to get started. You know, your problem's not going to go away. And the sooner you get started, the sooner it'll be fixed. That is extremely powerful. And I can see the results that when I make 10 phone calls, I know the next day, two of those patients are going to be in my office getting started. Wow. I love it. I love it. And, you know, I've had other people there. You're, you're saying it a lot more clearly than others have. Mm -hmm. But one of my best salespeople I've ever met in dentistry, he's a dentist and he's an amazing dentist and sells a lot of dentistry. He uses the word assume. He said, no, no, no. We love what we do. What we do is very helpful. I always assume every patient wants what I'm offering. I never think for one second they don't want what I'm offering. And that was the fundamental change for him early in his career. So he uses that word when he talks to his team. Assume. Assume that they want the best that we have. Don't ever sell them like the least, you know, right. best treatment or... Uh, so what would you say to that? Well, also, well, first of all, why would they be in your office if they didn't want your services, right? right? They wouldn't even be there. So you know they want your services. But never assume that they cannot afford it. I think right. that is the bigger, the bigger assumption. And the thing that I've learned as an orthodontist is sometimes you might have a family where there's a situation of um, a difficult situation where maybe there's a single mother or a young mother um, and you might assume or you might even know that uh, they don't necessarily have the funds to pay for comprehensive orthodontic treatment. But there's an aunt, there's an uncle, there are grandparents. Uh, I always tell my, my front desk uh, financial coordinator, if someone has um, Dentical, which is the, um, you know, the public um, assistance insurance for California, which, you know, we don't, we don't take that in our office for braces. Um, 
don't assume that they will not do the orthodontic treatment and pay for treatment because many of those patients pay cash in full either themselves or they have a relative that pays right. for the treatment. So never assume that they won't pay for the treatment because if they want it, they, they will get it. Right. And I've heard other people refer to that as wallet biopsies. Like you shouldn't, uh, shouldn't judge whether or not they're going to be able to afford this or find the resources to do so. So I think that's really, really and powerful. Also, and also care credit is a tremendous benefit. Um, mm -hmm. And some people, some dentists or maybe dental um, office uh, financial coordinators, they might think that that um, it won't pay for the services or maybe uh, the patient won't qualify. But as long as you have a job and as long as you have a credit history, you will qualify for care credit. Yeah. We're big fans of Care Credit. They're a great company, great people. And so when people say, like, give us a little bit more insight on in how you use it in your practice. Do you use it a lot? Do you use it frequently? Is it a regular tool? And it, you, I also know you just can't hand people a brochure and say, check this out. I mm -hmm. mean, it's got to be a much more thoughtful process than that. Well, with Care Credit, um, I use it exclusively for Invisalign because Invisalign has a pretty high lab bill. And because it has a high lab bill, the down payment has to be pretty high for Invisalign. And the down payment can be a stumbling block for patients. So about two years ago, we made the decision um, for Invisalign, we're just gonna go total care credit. We're not gonna do the 24 months financing and all that. And it has worked out really, really, really well. And I would actually say my conversion rate now for Invisalign has actually gone up after only offering care credit versus doing the in-house financing. Yeah, very, very good information. Now, I have so many other things. I'm just going to, you know, <laughs> I love the book so much. Now, I'm, I'm accustomed to seeing oh. your systems. You always have a system. I love your marketing book. You guys, if you haven't read her marketing book, it's great because you always have a system. It's not like an effort. And on page 214, yes. you, have, you have a calendar. So it's not like an effort. It's like you're creating a schedule. You've got January through December on the three components. You got the engagement component, the conversion component. Now, I want people to check it out because we don't have to tell them right, exactly right, right. how to. But talk to us about it's a system. You're, you're constantly using a system, right? Yes, yes. Well, the reason I put those charts in the back of my book is I want people to be organized and to know what action steps they can take. And I don't want them to be overwhelmed. So uh, I give them an idea how to get started or where to get started. But Kirk, if I could say, uh, if if someone is listening to this podcast right now and they're thinking, where could I get started with growing my practice and improving my treatment coordination system? I would say the number one thing right now, go to your computer and print up your list of pending patients that you've already done the exam and they haven't started treatment yet. And I would call every single person on that list, no matter how long ago they came for the exam. And if you don't get them on the phone, send them a postcard and tell them it's time for them to get started. How often, how frequent, you know, let's say I'm a dentist. Every, every month. I just every printed month. this list. There's a lot of people on this list. Am I calling them as my, are my team well, out? Okay. Here's here's the deal. And this is a game changer, uh, I think. No one is going to care about your dental practice as much as the owner, as much as the dentist cares. Because obviously, that's your business. You own it. It's your life. If you are frustrated 
with your conversion rate or with the number of cases that you are starting, or even if you want to start more cases, take over calling the patients yourself. And I guarantee you that in 90 days, you will have the highest conversion rate you've ever had. Tell us why. Well, number one, you're doing a thorough job. You're calling every single person on that list and you're doing it every single month. Number two, you're the doctor and I, the patient is not going to blow you off. You know, the doctor calls you and says, Hey, I'm waiting to hear back from you. Did you make a decision? They're going to tell you either yes or I change. I, oh, well, we have the seven excuses. We can go over that. Uh, or I, I'm not ready yet, or I changed my mind, or the seven excuses, or maybe they moved away, maybe they went somewhere else. Even if they went somewhere else, you should ask, may I ask why you went somewhere else? Now, I had a patient tell me, oh, Dr. Gorska, um, your office wasn't a fit for us. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Could you tell me why? my office wasn't a fit. And she said, well, the down payment was a little too high for us. Um, and I said, well, could you do $750 down payment? And she said, oh yes, we could do $750 down payment. I said, well, that's my minimum down payment, $750. And she goes, oh, I can, I can do that. I can get started. And she started treatment in my office. Wow. That's so telling me, that I wasn't a fit. You just needed to find out what she was really saying. That's right. So you're going to get the seven excuses. All, all right. right. Can we can we go into those? I want to know what they are. Yeah. Oh, he, these are the seven excuses. Okay. It's too expensive. I can't afford it. I need more opinions. I need to think about it. I need to talk to my husband. Uh, you're not convenient or I change my mind. Those are the seven excuses. And they're always the same seven excuses. There are no other excuses. Those are the seven excuses. When you get one of the seven excuses, ask the next question. What will you be thinking about? Is it the price or is it the procedure? It's the price. What is it about the price? Is it the down payment? or the payment plan. It's the down payment. Would you like to consider care credit? Oh, tell me about that. Okay, well, you can do no down payment. You can do equal payments. You can even spread it out over five years so that your monthly payment is less than $100. Wow, that sounds really good. I'd like to do that. Okay, let's do that. I was listening very careful to each one of the <laughs> Those excuses, you asked three questions in a row. Well, whatever the excuse, ask yeah. the next question. I need to talk to my husband. What will you be talking to your husband about? Is it the treatment or the fee? Or is it the location? Or Just ask the next question. I, I, I said to a patient once, um, she said, I need to talk to my husband. And I said, well, why don't you call him right now? We'll leave the room. We'll give you some privacy. Why don't you call him right now and talk to him about what you want to talk to him about? The woman said to me, oh, my husband's out in the car. I said, well, why don't you go get him? Bring him in here so that we could talk to him. So she went and got her husband. We talked to him. And then they started the treatment. Wow. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to ask and asking is powerful. Asking is powerful because it gets you to the next step and it helps you eliminate the barrier. Whatever the barrier is, it helps you eliminate it. Amory, I have like 90 more questions because I love this stuff, <laughs> but I want to be respectful. We're going to, I'm going to have you back for the HR one. We're going to do a couple more. I might even, as soon as I finish the rest of this, I know I'm going to have a ton more questions. So let's do this. What last thoughts do you have on taking action and treatment coordination 
in a great office. What are some of the thoughts you have? Well, um, the book really describes the engagement process, which is the importance of getting the patient in for the initial exam and um, having influence with them. Then conversion, once the patient leaves the office, it's really persistence, grit, and focus. You know, never giving up, calling the patient, continuing to follow up. But then the last section of the book, which is very important and could be a talk in itself, is the delivery of services. And I get into the financial uh, systems a little bit because you do need to collect for your services, uh, concentrate on getting full payment, uh, focusing on the cost of goods sold. You don't want to be doing treatment, you know, that's not profitable for you. And all of that goes into treatment coordination as well. So that's an important aspect. But at the very end of it all, uh, I think it's good to have a system in place where when you end your treatment, you ask the patient to refer their family and friends and more new patients. And there's no reason why 50% of your new patients can't come from the patients that you already have in your practice without spending um, almost anything on marketing. If you, mm -hmm. if you have a system in place to regularly ask for referrals. Yeah, I do have one other question. A lot of dentists immediately, when things aren't growing in the practice, they spend mm -hmm. all this money on marketing. When mm -hmm. it's clear to me, they could spend some more time on communicating and asking, and it, it would make a bigger impact than well, externally. Here's another thing you can do to grow your practice without spending one cent. Go to your missed exams list, no matter how long ago, and call every single patient who missed their initial exam in your office. I guarantee you 50% of those patients will probably reschedule in your office immediately. Wow. That's and, a huge... Yeah. And the other 30% will probably schedule within, I don't know, within a year for sure. Right. They and haven't remember, gone anywhere. They haven't gone anywhere. They just, they couldn't make it that day. They forgot about it. I call my own missed exams list and I talk to the people. I said, hi, this is Dr. Gorsica. We missed you at your exam. Um, would you like to reschedule? And they go, oh, we're so sorry. My daughter broke her leg. I had to take her to the hospital. Whatever. You, you hear all the things, you know, that happened. But they all reschedule. They'll, every yeah. single one of them. But you have to follow up on it. That is so awesome. That is something people don't talk about. It's yeah, also. And, and if the patient does miss the exam, call them within five or seven minutes because it may just be that they totally forgot and they're just down the street or they're at the grocery store, or whatever. It might be that they can still make it. But if they can't make it, they'll probably reschedule right then and there that day. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a good way to stay on top of it is if you just call them even during the missed exam or, you know, reschedule them that day. Yeah. Outstanding, Amory. I, again, every time I'm with you, you always give me a ton to think about and a ton of homework. And I'm just telling you guys, you got to check out her book. It's called. Okay, I'm going to give you one more tip. Oh, okay. you're going to give us one more. Okay, cool. Okay. This is for all the treatment coordinators out there. Please. I know that making phone calls is not easy because treatment coordinators are pulled in a million different directions, right? They might be asked to look up an insurance, go to the front desk, answer calls. You have got to isolate yourself. I call it in the book, schedule an hour of power, right? That one hour a day, you go in the room, you close the door, everybody knows, don't anyone interrupt. It's the hour of power, we're making the calls. And if you make calls for one hour every single day, your practice will be so on top of things. Um, you'll never go back. Love it. I think everybody <laughs> needs an hour of power. <laughs>
So you are awesome. And again, you guys got to check out the book. It's Take Action, Treatment Coordination for a Successful Dental Practice by Dr. Anne Marie Gorsica. You'll love it. You'll take as many notes as I have, if not more. And like I said, Anne Marie, we're going to get you back again and again and again. I learn something every single time I talk with you. So uh, thank you so much. Um, thank stick you. Around. Oh, it's my pleasure. So stick around while we say goodbye to everybody else. And thank you guys for listening to uh, and watching the Best Practices Show. So if you enjoyed today, just do us a favor, hit the share button, share it with your friends. Keep sending us suggestions for things that you want to see. I'm going to have Amory back. Send us some suggestions, things that you want to see from her. She is a wealth of information. And I actually can't wait for the HR one because I know you're an authority on that. So um, thank you guys again. And until we see you next time, keep watching the best practices show. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Mm -hmm.